You're watching the new Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another On the Road episode of the New Stack Makers. I'm your host, Heather Joslin, editor in chief of the New Stack. And we're here today at KubeCon plus Cloud Native Con North America here in beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. Um, so today we're going to uh, dig into some news from Tigera that the company is announcing here in here, here in Atlanta uh, related to Kubernetes and security. And because it's 2025, not surprisingly, AI is involved. So we're going to hear all about that. Our guest for this conversation will be Ratan Tipperini, who is president and CEO of Tigera. Hi, Ratan. Hi, Heather. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Um, can you briefly tell us what Tigera does? Yeah, so we provide a unified platform for everything you need for Kubernetes networking, network security observability. Mm -hmm. And the platform runs on any Kubernetes uh, platform, uh, either in the cloud or on-prem. And what we've noticed is it helps break any kind of a platform lock-in for our customers. Okay. And how, how long have you been a uh, company? Uh, eight years now. Okay. Yes. Excellent. A lot has changed in eight years. Absolutely. A lot has changed. Um, so what, uh, we should probably just get started because it's a big topic. Um, let's start with the problem that Tigera addresses. Uh, what are the specific security challenges around Kubernetes? Yeah, I'd say, you know, first is to be able to manage the blast radius of any attacks and Configuring network security is a very critical part of that. And we provide the best of class infrastructure, all the tooling required to configure network security for any Kubernetes cluster. No. Uh, and a little bit more nuanced uh, detail on that is perhaps you want to be able to micro segment your workloads so that if you do if you do come under an attack, you can actually limit the blast radius. You also have to worry about egress traffic going out of the cluster mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons. You know, one is the most obvious one, data exfiltration. You're going to be able to prevent that and really manage what goes out of the cluster. Mm -hmm. uh, the second problem is a little bit more nuanced. When traffic is exiting the cluster, there's a high likelihood that there's a firewall behind that. Mm -hmm. And the firewall looks for some kind of identification uh, uh, for, the, for the traffic exiting the cluster, which is very difficult to establish in Kubernetes, and we do that. We actually help identify the, the traffic exiting the cluster so that it's easier for firewalls to set policies based mm -hmm. on the traffic, whether they allow it or deny it. Uh, and we also have a very powerful ingress solution we have implemented on Gateway API so we can manage everything on the ingress side. Uh, we also provide a WAF solution. We can actually uh, detect attacks at the L7 level. Uh, so we have a very broad solution, yeah. and, it, and that's why it's like a single unified platform. Everything you need for Kubernetes networking, network security, mm -hmm. and observability. And um, that everything you need has probably changed a bit because of AI. What are some of the um, some of the challenges that AI in particular brings to to security in, in yeah, Kubernetes? So, so first, I'd I'd say you know what we're announcing today is actually the introduction of Calico AI, which is to inject AI into our solution. We have a very rich solution but it, it can also be very comprehensive and a little bit intimidating to use. Mm -hmm. And uh, we figured out a mechanism using AI to simplify the user experience for anyone using Calico mm -hmm. to be able to unlock more value so that you can actually chat with the solution mm -hmm. uh, and unlock value. So some simple examples may help illustrate the point. Sure. Uh, for instance, you can ask Calico AI uh, what ports are open, like whether you have the right type of network policies configured to secure your cluster. So that's mm -hmm. a starting point. Or perhaps you're having trouble connecting to services and you can ask Calico AI if some network policies are actually preventing traffic from, from actually talking to each other. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you could also try and query to see what kind of egress traffic is going out of the cluster. So there's a range of troubleshooting scenarios that can be automated using Calico AI, mm -hmm. and we can make it really interactive and easy to use. Mm -hmm. So that's really the primary focus for Calico AI. And what we've launched today, we believe, is the first of many innovations. Mm -hmm. We're working with our customers to understand what kind of challenges they're running into operations, and our intent is to leverage Calico AI to really go down the list and yeah. really solve all those. Yeah. And the, um, um, the other thing that you're um, releasing is uh, the uh, the uh, ambient, Istio ambient mode uh, service mesh. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so this, you know, the genesis for this was our customers coming back to us and saying, you know, a couple of things. First is, Istio has been around for a while, about mm -hmm. eight years. It's starting to gain good adoption. It has an amazing brand. Yeah. Uh, it's being sponsored by Google and developers love it. They've actually embraced the solution. But we're starting to see now platform teams take ownership of Istio and manage that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one trend we have seen. The second trend is a lot of our customers who happen to be platform engineers, they really want a single vendor to manage uh, all the solutions so that they aren't dealing with multiple vendors. Right. Uh, so that's really what led us to uh, fully bundle Istio as part of Calico. So we'll actually harden the solution, will fully integrate it out of the box, and we intend to do some deep integration, and I can give you a few examples of that in the future. Uh, but that's the genesis of this, so that customers have one single solution through which they can secure all the way from L3 to L7, uh, and you know they, you have defense and depth, and you have everything you need to secure things from L3 all the way to L7. So maybe let me give you some examples of potential integration points for us. Uh, Istio Ambient Mesh produces a very rich set of logs at the L7 level. And at the L3, we, we, Calico has probably the richest uh, set of logs mm -hmm. with complete with metadata for each and every flow log. Mm -hmm. uh, so our intention is to integrate the two and show that in a single pane of glass so that it becomes all, uh, very easy to troubleshoot. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second use case we have noticed is a lot of our customers asking us for encryption. Mm -hmm. We already offer WireGuard as a best-in-class encryption solution, but we have a class of customers who insist on MPLS. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Istio Ambient Mode, we're able to, able to actually give them MPLS in addition to WireGuard. So those are two examples of the value we think we can unlock. Mm -hmm. um, so, and this was... It does sound like this was very much um, instigated by customer customer demands for this. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely being driven by customer demand. It's also a little bit of a reflection of the maturity of the STO solution itself. Mm -hmm. I think the ambient mode uh, is very good at resource optimization, uh, and it's also a little easier to maintain and manage. Mm -hmm. And as the solution has matured, it was initially most companies. The developers actually bring in Istio, but the inflection point we are seeing is now the platform teams are being asked to own and manage and operate Istio, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so that was the driver for us, and uh, we're trying to make the lives of our platform engineers and architects easier every day. And yeah. so that, that was one of the primary reasons we made this decision. And um, I, I've talked to a few other um companies here at KubeCon who talk about uh, who who have um, AI-based sol solution added AI-based function functions to their their uh, solutions that work with Kubernetes that work with security. Um, is there an aspect of this you mentioned like making making uh, engineers' lives easier? Is there an aspect of this of you know we always we always hear about the skills ga gap like there's there's some um, not enough engineers to fill the the roles or knowledge about people who know a lot about Kubernetes, who know a lot about um, security uh, and, uh, you know, it's burnout is a part factor, especially sometimes with yeah. on, the, on the op side, especially. Absolutely. No, that's a so, big part of it. I'll actually take, uh, your, uh, take your statement one step further. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, it, it's quite interesting how this industry and the specific space has evolved. 
Because when you talk about networking and network security, it is really sitting at the intersection of the networking team right. and the platform team. And for the most part, the solutions are being operated by the platform teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't really have uh, the benefit of having uh, a decade or two decades of experience working in networking like the right. network engineers do, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so they're pretty gun shy about getting into the details and into the weeds of networking, mm -hmm. uh, and they don't need to for to do do their job. Mm -hmm. And Calico AI is a great mechanism to help them understand some of the nuances and the intricacies of how to troubleshoot these things mm -hmm. without having to go get a PhD in networking. Yeah. So that's one of it. And the more simpler explanation is what you said. There's also a dearth of skills. Yeah. In the industry right now, operating Kubernetes is not the easiest thing. Mm -hmm. So Calico AI will make their jobs a little easier and expand the talent pool that you can tap into to actually operate these Kubernetes clusters. Um, well, we talked about, uh, you talked a little bit about how the ecosystem around AI and Kubernetes may, may evolve. Do you have any predictions about how things are going to go in the next five years or so around that? Yeah, five years feels like a very long time <laughs> yeah, uh, for AI to talk <laughs> about, you know, because things are changing almost by the day. Yeah. Uh, so it's fascinating. Uh, but one thing I'm excited about that uh, we're actually working on, we're not ready to make an announcement, but uh, we've actually built something and we're working towards a big announcement. Uh, there's no secret that AI agents are something that's very really exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we're starting to see our customers experiment and do some amazing things with this. Yeah. And uh, you, you have the ability to unlock a lot of new value. And plus, you can actually have anyone building agents. You don't really need to be an uh, engineer or a software engineer to build that. Mm -hmm. uh, so as, as an example, one of our customers, they have 100,000 employees and they're building a platform to enable any one of the 100,000 employees to build these agents to unlock value from the data that they have accumulated over the last uh, 20 or 30 years. Wow. Now, when you do that, the class of problems in uh, monitoring, in security, in observability uh, are very complex uh, to mm -hmm. solve. Uh, and, and that's the problem we're, to, well, you know, we're solving with a new product that we're building that we're very excited about. <laughs> and uh, I, mean, I mean, to state the obvious, uh, agents are autonomous and uh, they're not deterministic. So those are two very powerful concepts that for yeah. some of us who've been in the industry for a while, in computer science, we're not used to that. We're used to very deterministic pieces of software. Yeah. But the minute you have something autonomous and you can't really predict or it's very non-deterministic in its behavior, yeah. uh, you have like a nightmare in terms of security. You cannot predict yeah. which agents this, uh, this agent is, which other agents this agent is going to talk to. You can't predict what action it is going to take. And yeah. you can't predict if it's going to do the same thing two different times, right? Right. So so that's like a nightmare scenario from a security and monitoring and observability perspective. Right. Uh, so that's the problem we are solving with the new solution we're building. And so uh, long story short, I think if, uh, if I have to uh, look in the crystal ball and predict what's ahead, not five years, but more in the next four quarters, uh, we'll start to see a lot more penetration of these agents inside the enterprise. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that, we're also going to be opening up a can of worms in terms yeah. of observability, security, monitoring. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's going to be quite interesting to see how, how, the, how this plays out. Yeah, it does. I mean, there is, it seems like there is a lot of tension in the in the industry right now between giving people, you know, the citizen developer yeah. idea or, or giving people um, more, uh, you know, being able to self-service, greater self-service, whether it's provisioning infrastructure, whether it's um, building, you know, uh, building apps. But they, but, uh, but on the other hand, there's, there's danger in that. There's, there's good, the need for guardrails. So. Yeah, I completely agree with that. But I think we should really lean in and do this. You know, mm -hmm. we're actually experimenting by building agents inside our own company. Mm -hmm. where We're building agents to automate every function from marketing and sales 
engineering, customer success, recruiting. Right. And uh, it's quite amazing and remarkable what, uh, you know, people inside Tiger are coming up with. Mm. And we're also learning from each other, right? It's like yeah. we have people build something and do a demo. And next thing, you know, someone else in a different function has looked at the demo and said, oh, maybe I can use that idea to do something else and unlock some new value. Mm -hmm. uh, so the citizen developer thing I'm excited about because uh, we'll see an explosion of ideas. Mm -hmm. But you're also right. I think from a security and uh, just governance, mm -hmm. it's going to be critical for us to put the right guardrails in place. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why we are ex so excited about the product we've built. We're actually working with some of the early customers or building these agents to get our new product deployed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we'll be making some announcements pretty soon about yeah. that. Well, it's, that sounds pretty tantalizing. I can't yeah. wait to hear. Yeah. Can, can I say one more thing? Sure, sure. Yeah. You know, one of the other trends we are seeing is that uh, we are seeing uh, intent and uh, projects to migrate VMs mm -hmm. over to Kubernetes. And that's something we're very excited about. Mm -hmm. And some of it has been caused by uh, Broadcom's price hike. And there's a big exodus of customers wanting to move VMs to Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. But when they do that, one of the big challenges they're running into is networking. Mm -hmm. Networking on the VM side was very sophisticated, but they also made a bunch of assumptions. And uh, they also built some sophisticated functionality in networking on the VM side. Mm -hmm. And most customers are looking for something comparable on the container side. So KubeWord is a powerful mechanism to move most of these VMs to Kubernetes. However, uh, there's still a big gap in how you address networking mm -hmm. uh, for KubeWord. And that's an area we're leaning into and making some big investments to solve those problems for customers. Okay. Well, th thank you. Thank you very much for 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 joining us today, Ratan, uh, from Tigera. Yeah. And uh, and uh, I just want to thank all of you for joining us for this conversation. This has been Heather Joslin from the Newstack Makers on the road in Atlanta, Georgia for KubeCon plus CloudNativeCon North America. We'll see you next time. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.